friends, last week we learned that God made peace with us. God made peace with us through Jesus, the bridge that reconnects us to God. Mr. Elijah, have you ever played any team sports? Yes, I have. I played college football. Then you know how important it is for everyone to work together and to do their part. In fact, that's the way God made us to live. He made us to live in peace with each other. Pull out your Bible while we go to our big Bible. The Bible is God's holy word, and every word is true. Today, we're going to the New Testament, book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 15. The Apostle Paul writes, Let the peace of Christ, to which you were also called in one body, rule your hearts and be thankful. Paul was saying that we should work together, just like all the parts of a body. They each have a different job to do, but they all work together. Your eyes see things, your ears hear things, and your hands hold things. And they all work together so that you can live your life. But sometimes working together can be hard. So Paul reminds us about the peace of Christ that rules our hearts, can change the way we treat others. Today, you're going to meet Jacob. He's super silly. As you watch today's story, be thinking about the bottom line question. How can we make peace with others? You're my courage, I don't have to be afraid You're my fortress, no matter what comes my way You're my treasure, forever, yes we'll be together always Even when the days get harder, I know you'll rescue me Even when the sky is darker, I know you'll bring me peace you are my strength, you are my savior, oh. Even when the road gets longer, I know you'll be with me. Even when the waves crash harder, your face is all I see. You are my strength, you are my savior, oh. You are with me. Every single day Through the darkness Oh, you lead the way You're my treasure forever Yes, we'll be together And today, we're talking about peace. Peace is proving you care more about each other than winning an argument. So, if you had an argument with someone and you feel like that relationship is broken, peace can help you rebuild that relationship. 
It's like building a, a bridge. Bridge, bridge, bridge. Bridge, bridge. You can build a bridge out of anything. Legos. Popsicle sticks. Spaghetti. And even trash. Sometimes we throw things away without thinking about how much we really need them. So I'm going to recycle this big, beautiful bin of garbage by building a bridge. Let's do this. It's alive. Now we just need some glue. Um, glue, glue, oh, glue stick. That should work, right? Everything you build needs the right kind of glue to hold it all together. Without the right kind of glue, everything can kind of fall apart. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Recycle Bridge. See, it's hard to make things stick together when you don't have the right kind of glue. As you'll discover in today's story, helping people stick together takes the right kind of glue too. So, stick around. <laughs> you see what I did there? Stick. <laughs> the Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story the epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Colossians, chapter three, verse 15. In a letter written to the Colossian church, the apostle Paul wrote, let the peace that Christ gives rule in your hearts. As parts of one body, you were appointed to live in peace and be thankful. Now let's see what that truth may look like played out in our lives today. Katie wiped the sweat from her forehead and took a long drink from her water bottle. How is it this hot in April? She looked back at the long patch of scrubby ground on the corner lot by Miss Watson's house. Her friends, Caleb and Nona, were both pulling weeds too. I thought we'd be done before lunch. It'll take us days to clear out all this brush. All three kids lived in the same neighborhood and were in Mr. Benson's seventh grade social studies class. It had been Katie's bright idea to start a neighborhood garden for their community service project. Well, we have to finish, unless you want to fail social studies. Even though the friends had been working for a couple of hours already, they'd only cleared the brambles from a small patch of land at the corner. Even when we finish pulling weeds, we still have to dig up the dirt. Yeah, and plant the seeds and water them and stuff. Look, we just need to get it done. I really want an A, okay? Let's use what we've cleared so far and pick one thing to plant. Sunflowers. What? They're big, they're bold. They'll brighten up the whole neighborhood. I don't want to plant flowers. Katie did a quick search on her phone for backup. Plus, you aren't supposed to plant sunflowers until summer. That's a big fat fail for class. Well, it feels like summer. We should plant a pumpkin patch. I mean, how awesome will it be to have all the little kids come right here to get their pumpkins in the fall? That's like half a year away. You guys. Plus two words, pumpkin pie. Uh, two more words is disgusting. Katie jumped right between her sparring friends. You guys, we need something easy that will actually grow now before the end of the school year. I looked it up. She held up her phone and showed them a picture of small flowers with viney green stalks. What are those even? You have got to be kidding me. Katie checked her screen again. Petunias, we can plant them right here by the stop sign. They grow super fast, we'll get a good pick for class, and then we're done. I thought the whole point of this was to help people. Petunias are nice. This is ridiculous. Something that small will just get overrun by all the weeds we haven't pulled. You got a better idea? Yeah, sunflowers. You know, something big and beautiful. Or pumpkins! Katie ripped off her gardening gloves and hurled them into the dirt. Fine, do your own community service project. 
You're quitting the garden? It's not a garden, it's a weedy dirt patch. I'll do my own project. Katie grabbed her water bottle and her tools and stalked off. I cannot believe them. At home, Katie kicked off her muddy shoes and hurled her dirty gloves on the floor. How'd it go, sweetie? Awful. We hardly cleared any weeds, and Nona and Caleb wouldn't listen to my idea about what to plant. It is a pretty big project. I'm doing my own. Isn't it a group thing? Nona and Caleb don't even care about the grade. They want to do all this stuff with pumpkins and sunflowers and stuff we'll never even finish. I get it. It's a lot easier to keep it small, but it's up to you whether you want to hold on to being angry or go make this right with your friends. They started it. Look, God designed you to be at peace on the inside, peace with Him and with others. Okay, okay, yeah, I just, I don't know where to start. You could start with more help. I bet Miss Watson would be willing to lend a hand since that weedy patch is right by her yard. Maybe. Oh, and Mrs. Garcia is always trying to start a garden in their backyard, but she says it's too shady. Maybe she'd like to help. Katie nodded slowly. After lunch, she took a trip around the neighborhood and spotted Caleb shooting some hoops in his driveway. Then she dragged him across the street to knock on Nona's door. You realize I don't want to talk about this? I don't want to talk about this. Just give me a minute, both of you, please. Caleb and Nona stared at Katie, arms crossed. I'm really sorry. I got so stuck on making an A that I didn't listen to your ideas. I was just so hot and frustrated. Katie's friends waited. I talked to Mrs. Watson and the Garcias and that family with the little kids by the stop sign. They all want a garden, like a big vegetable garden. They want to help us. Really? We get cleared the lot pretty fast with that much help. And we can plant everything, tomatoes and beans and carrots and sunflowers and pumpkins and whatever people want to eat. We'll have to help keep it up over the summer though. All the way to pumpkin season. Exactly. Okay, I'm in. Caleb gave Katie a high five. Then they both turned to Nona. She hesitated. Okay, sure, but you're not gonna get me to eat pumpkin pie, because sweet potato is way better. Deal. The Garcias can help out tomorrow afternoon, so we can get back to it then. Katie headed home, relieved that she was on good terms with her friends again and at peace on the inside. She was living out the truth of Paul's words. Let the peace that Christ gives rule in your hearts. As parts of one body, you were appointed to live in peace and be thankful. Now that you met Jacob, didn't I tell you he was super silly? But he's also super smart. He gave us a great example about peace. Peace is the glue that keeps relationships together. And he also gives us the answer to today's bottom line question. How can we make peace with others? If you said, we can make peace with others by proving we care more about others than about ourselves. You right. God makes peace with us when we put our faith in Jesus. And he made us to live in peace as we share his love, kindness, and forgiveness with each other. That's right. When God's peace is in our hearts, it makes us want to live in peace with others. We can let go of anger or hurt feelings and keep disagreements and frustrations from driving us apart. So bottom line, we can make peace with others. God wants us to take the first step to fix a problem. This might feel scary or unfair, but he promises to help and to honor you for trying. Let's go ahead and pray together. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus so that we can be at peace with you. Thank you for creating us to work together, just like a body, with each of us having a part to play. Please help us to follow your example and choose to make peace with the people around us. We love you and we ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. This week, think about someone who you need to make peace with. Ask God for help to let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. You can even ask someone you trust for ideas on how to take the first step. This month's key passage reminds us how important peace is in all our relationships. Romans 14, 19 says, so then let us pursue what promotes peace and what builds up one another. Let's go ahead and say Romans 14, 19 together using our hand motions. 
So then, let us pursue what promotes peace and what builds up one another. Romans 14, 19. This verse tells us that we must always build each other up. And when we do, we can live in peace with others. After all, Jesus gave up his life to make peace between us and God. God made peace with us and you can experience peace with others by building them up. 